The introduction section of the research paper is very important because it is the place where most people will decide if they want to read the paper or not. It needs to be organized and present information needed to lay the foundation for the rest of the paper. This presentation goes over each of the sections that may be present in your introduction, but you may or may not use all of them depending on how your topic fits. You will need to open with a broad introduction to your research topic to provide information and then move to more specific information about your topic. It should be compelling information that makes people interested in your topic and want to read more. You should explain why this topic is important and try to state things in a positive manner, especially when discussing your research. If you do not describe your topic as important, it makes it difficult for others to see that it is important. While this section isn't the literature review, you will cite many other studies in this section. As you build the case for your research, you should discuss papers that have done something similar because you are building up to discuss the gap that your research will fill. You should use other studies to provide information about your topic, but ultimately you are defining where your research fits in the picture with other research. The other studies are being used to explain the setting for your research examining where you got the data, the method used, and the topic. It won't be exceptionally long, but it needs to be precise and explain the context well. While you are not required to use a theory for this paper, it can help to frame your research and hypotheses. Often, working with a theory in early research papers simplifies the process since someone else has proven the method you will be using. It also helps to strengthen the paper as you tie it back to foundational research. That said, using a proven theory can be limiting as the research must fit within it so give it consideration before starting. Although often changing it is not as difficult as starting from scratch. Even if you choose to not use a theoretical framework, you should explore how others have done so and look at the theories they have chosen. You can choose to align your research to a proven theory if it is relatable, the theory will often give you the how and why of your research. You can use it to dis demonstrate how others have used this theory in a similar way on a different topic. Remember that you cannot perform the exact same research as someone else, but you can shift it to another topic to bring out new points. Using a theory also provides a basis for hypothesis creation and often allows you to utilize methods used by others to streamline your process. Feel free to be creative about theory selection and to build from it. You can also utilize the theory 
to build your research methods from. Using a solid theory helps, especially if you are having a hard time moving forward with your research. Using a theory provides a framework for you to build your idea from and can promote creativity. If you choose to use a theory, you will need to tie your hypotheses to it. While all of this will not be done in the introduction, but instead continue throughout the paper, it needs to be introduced in the introduction. Theories are formulated to explain, predict, and understand phenomena and in many cases to challenge and extend existing knowledge within the limits of the critical bounding assumptions. The theoretical framework is the structure that can hold or support a theory of a research study. The theoretical framework introduces and describes the theory which explains why the research problem under study exists. A theoretical framework consists of concepts together with their definitions and existing theory or theories that are used for your particular study. The theoretical framework must demonstrate an understanding of theories and concepts that are relevant to the topic of your research paper and that will relate it to the broader fields of knowledge in the class you are taking. The theoretical framework is not something that is found readily available in the literature. You must review course readings and pertinent research literature for theories and analytic models that are relevant to the research problem you are investigating. The selection of a theory should depend on its appropriateness, ease of application, and explanatory power. The theoretical framework strengthens the study in the following ways. An explicit statement of theoretical assumptions permits the reader to evaluate them critically. The theoretical framework connects the researcher to existing knowledge. Guided by a relevant theory, you are given a basis for your hypotheses and choice of research methods. Articulating the theoretical assumptions of a research study forces you to address questions of why and how. It permits you to move from simply describing a phenomenon observed to generalizing about various aspects of that phenomenon. Having a theory helps you to identify the limits to those generalizations. A theoretical framework specifies which key variables influence a phenomenon of interest. It alerts you to examine how those key variables might differ and under what circumstances by virtue of its application nature, good theory in the social sciences is of value precisely because it fulfills one primary purpose, to explain the meaning, nature, and challenges of a phenomenon, often experienced but unexplained in the world in which we live, so that we may use that knowledge and understanding to act in more informed, and effective ways. Here are some strategies to develop an effective theoretical framework. Examine your thesis title and research problem. The research problem anchors your entire study and forms the basis from which you construct your theoretical framework. Brainstorm on what you consider to be the key variables in your research. Answer the question, what factors contribute to the presumed effect? Review related literature 
to find answers to your research question. List the constructs and variables that might be relevant to your study. Group these variables into independent and dependent categories. Review the key social science theories that are introduced to you in your course readings and choose the theory or theories that can best explain the relationship between the key variables in your study Discuss the assumptions or propositions of this theory and point out their relevance to your research. A theoretical framework is used to limit the scope of the relevant data. By focusing on specific variables and defining the specific viewpoint or framework that the researcher will take in analyzing and interpreting the data to be gathered. Understanding concepts and variables according to the given definitions and building knowledge by validating or challenging theoretical assumptions. Think of theories as the conceptual basis for understanding, analyzing, and designing ways to investigate relationships within social systems. To the end, the following roles served by a theory can help guide the development of your framework. Means by which new research data can be interpreted and coded for future use. A response to new problems that have no previously identified solution strategy. A means for identifying and defining research problems a means for prescribing or evaluating solutions to research problems, a way of telling us that certain factors among the accumulated knowledge are important and which facts are not, as a means of giving old data new interpretations and new meaning, a means by which to identify important new issues and prescribe the most critical research questions that need to be answered to maximize understanding of the issue. It's also a means of providing members of a professional discipline with a common language and a frame of reference for defining boundaries of their profession. And the purpose of a theory is a means to guide and inform research so that it can in turn, guide research efforts and improve professional practice. The theoretical framework may be rooted in a specific theory, in which case you are expected to test the validity of an existing theory in relation to a specific events, issues, or phenomena. Given this, it is perhaps easiest to understand the nature and function of a theoretical framework if it is viewed as the answer to two basic questions. What is the research problem? Question. Why is your approach a feasible solution? The answers to these questions come from a thorough review of the literature and your course readings summarized in the literature review and the gaps in the research that emerge from the review process. With this in mind, a complete theoretical framework will likely not emerge until after you have completed a thorough review of the literature. Some tips. In writing this part of your research paper, keep in mind the following. Clearly describe the framework concepts, models, or specific theories that underpin your study. This includes noting who the key theorists are in the field who have conducted research on the problem you are investigating, and when necessary, the historical context that supports the formulation of that theory. This latter element is particularly important if the theory is relatively unknown 
or it is borrowed from another discipline. Position your theoretical framework within a broader context of related frameworks, concepts, models, or theories. There will likely be several concepts, theories, or models that can be used to help develop a framework for understanding the research problem. Therefore, note why the framework you've chosen is the appropriate one. You should make your theoretical assumptions as explicit as possible. Later, your discussion of methodology should be linked back to this theoretical framework. Don't just take what the theory says as a given. Reality is never accurately represented in such a simplistic way. If you imply that it can be, you fundamentally distort a reader's ability to understand the findings that emerge. Given this, always note the limitations of the theoretical framework you've chosen. For example, what parts of the research problem require further investigation because the theory does not explain a certain phenomenon? When identifying the gap in the literature, you're looking for the research no one else has done, which is why we did the literature review first. Here, you will present similar studies or method and explain why your topic is so important. You need to show that no one else has done your exact same research, why yours is different, and what makes it needed in the grand setting. This often feels uncomfortable in the beginning, but it's important. You may struggle to find an exact topic or setting unique for what you want to study. After all, a lot of other studies are already published. But if you keep modifying your topic a little bit, you will find a gap. Often making small changes to your topic are better than making large changes, since now you know the research better. The most important part to identifying this is to keep reading other research to see how they have outlined it and what their future research suggestions indicated should be done. So this section of the paper should be very formal with your research question or questions separated out and presented by themselves. It should lead directly from outlining the gap in the literature, making the section of the paper go seamlessly from one topic to the other. The question should be formal, measurable, and specific. It should make it easy to see where your research is going from this topic. In the social sciences, the research problem establishes the means by which you must answer the so what question. The so what question refers to a research problem surviving the relevancy test, the quality of a measurement procedure that provides repeatability and accuracy. Note that answering the so what question requires a commitment on your part to not only show that you have researched the material, but that you have thought about its significance. To survive the so what question, problem statements should possess the following attributes, clarity and precision. A well-written statement does not make sweeping generalizations and irresponsible statements. Identification of what would be studied while avoiding the use of value-laden words and terms. Identification of an overarching question and key factors or variables. Identification of key concepts and terms. Articulation of the study's boundaries or parameters. Some generalizability in regards to applicability and bringing results into general use. Conveyance of the study's importance benefits and justification, regardless of the type of research, is important to address the so what question by demonstrating that the research is not trivial. 
does not have unnecessary jargon and conveyance of more than the mere gathering of descriptive data, providing only a snapshot of the issue or phenomenon under investigation. There are four general conceptualizations of a research problem in the social scientist. Casuist research problem. This type of problem relates to the determination of right and wrong in questions of conduct or conscience by analyzing moral dilemmas through the application of general rules and the careful distinction of special cases. Difference research problem typically asks the question, is there a difference between two or more groups or treatments? This type of problem statement is used when the researcher compares or contrasts two or more phenomena. Descriptive research problem typically asks the question, what is? But the underlying purpose to describe a situation, state, or existence of a specific phenomenon. Relational research problem suggests a relationship of some sort between two or more variables to be investigated. The underlying purpose is to investigate qualities, characteristics that are connected in some way. A problem statement in the social sciences should contain a lead in that helps ensure the reader will maintain interest over the study. A declaration of originality, example, mentioning a knowledge void, which would be supported by the literature review. An indication of the central focus of the study and an explanation of the study's significance or the benefits to be derived from an investigating problem. Sources for problems. Identifying a problem to study can be challenging, not because there is a lack of issues that could be investigated, but due to pursuing a goal of formulating a socially relevant and researchable problem statement that is unique and does not simply duplicate the work of others. To facilitate how you might select a problem from which to build a research study. Consider these three broad sources of inspiration. Deductions from theory. This relates to deductions made from social philosophy or generalizations embodied in life and society that researcher is familiar with. These deductions from human behavior are then fitted with an empirical frame of reference through research. From a theory, the research can formulate a research problem or hypothesis stating the affecting, affected findings in certain empirical situations. The research asks the question, what relationship between variables will be observed if theory aptly summarizes the state of affairs? One can then design and carry out a systematic inve investigation to assess whether empirical data confirm or reject the hypothesis, and hence the theory, interdisciplinary perspectives. Identifying a problem that forms the basis for a research study can come from academic movements and scholarship originating in disciplines outside of your primary area of study. A review of pertinent literature should include examining research from related disciplines which can expose you to new avenues of exploration and analysis. An interdisciplinary approach to selecting a research problem offers an opportunity to construct a more comprehensive understanding of a very complex issue than any single discipline might provide. Interviewing practitioners the identification of research problems about particular topics can arise from formal or informal discussions with practitioners who provide insight into new directions for future research and how to make research findings increasingly relevant to practice. 
Discussions with experts in the field, such as teachers, social workers, healthcare providers, etc., offers a chance to identify practical, real world problems that may be understudied or ignored within academic circles. This approach also provides some practical knowledge, which may help in the process of designing and conducting your study. Personal experience, your everyday experiences, can give rise to worthwhile problems for investigation. Think critically about your own experiences and or frustrations with an issue facing society, your community, or in your neighborhood. This can be derived, for example, from deliberate observations of certain relationships for which there is no clear explanation or witnessing an event that appears harmful to a person or group or that is out of the ordinary. Lastly, relevant literature. The selection of a research problem can often be derived from an extensive and thorough review of pertinent research associated with your overall area of interest. This may reveal where gaps remain in our understanding of a topic. Research may be conducted to fill such gaps in knowledge Evaluate if the methodologies employed in prior studies can be adapted to solve other problems or determine if a similar study could be conducted in a different subject area or applied to different study sample. Example, different groups of people. Also, authors frequently conclude their studies by noting implications for future research. This can also be a valuable source of problems to investigate. A good problem statement begins by introducing the broad area in which your research is centered and then gradually leads the reader to the more narrow questions you are posing. Statement need not be lengthy, but a good research problem should incorporate the following features. Compelling topic. Simple curiosity is not a good enough reason to pursue a research study. The problem that you choose to explore must be important to you and to a larger community you share. The problem chosen must be one that motivates you to address it, supports multiple perspectives. The problem must be phrased in a way that avoids dichotomies and instead supports the gen generation and exploration of multiple perspectives. A general rule of thumb is that a good research problem is one that would generate a variety of viewpoints from a composite audience made up of reasonable people. Lastly, it needs to be researchable. It seems a bit obvious, but you don't want to find yourself in the midst of investigating a complex research project and realize that you don't have much to draw on for your research. Choose research problems that can be supported by the resources available to you. If you're using a model, often stemming from the theory, if you selected one, it can be presented here in this example, you can see the different measurements in the study, how the hypotheses align to it. You should list the hypotheses as well. Your study may only have one hypothesis, and that is fine. This example shows how easy it is to have multiple hypotheses. Recall back to the paper or papers you chose to model your paper from and see how they used or didn't use models and draw from that. Sometimes the research question and hypotheses are the same, but most often showing how you will quantitatively measure the results of your research question is how you arrive at your hypotheses. There needs to be a space after the hypothesis when you allude to the latter sections of the paper. While you may not address all of the points listed, and you may have done this earlier in a section you are setting up to transition, and as such, describing the setting for your research is important. 
The introduction ends up being somewhat of an overview of the entire paper and moving past your hypotheses, you should allude to your data methods and results. As you come to the end of this section, you need to explain why it is important. What does your paper solve? How does it contribute to the big picture of the research setting? When you begin writing this section, you may not know all of this yet, but allude to what is to come and rewrite the ending to this section later, if you need to. It is important that your research contribute to the current body of knowledge and to the setting it is about. Who is it important to and what does it contribute? Briefly explain that here to allude to why someone should read the entire paper. At the end of the introduction, research paper is used to have a paragraph that just listed the rest of the sections in the paper, but that has gone out of fashion, which is good because it was boring. That said, there still needs to be a transition. You need to allude back to the literature because that is what section is next. You can do so by tying the contributions back to the literature or any other way that works, but it is important that your writing is easy to read and follow and flow from one section to another.